The next uh, level of structure is going to be the tertiary structure, and this is where we start thinking about the side chain interactions. Okay, and so first, the you can think of looking at uh, the protein structure as uh, looking at what's the dominant secondary structure in it first, right? So for instance, we have three different proteins here in the slide. Uh, the first one is comprised almost entirely, uh, is in, almost entirely of alpha, helix, alpha helices, but there are also turns uh, that allow the alpha helices to interact with each other, okay? So we can look at, uh, this would be the three-dimensional structure of this protein, and then on the bottom, uh, this is just a schematic of the secondary structure where the cylinders are alpha helices, all right? Other types of proteins might be uh, composed entirely of beta sheets, okay, instead of alpha helices. And of course, we can have proteins that have a combination of both, some alpha helices and some beta sheets uh, that make up the overall uh, 3D ar architecture <coughs> of the protein, all right? And so, and and so now what's holding these secondary structures together then is the interactions between the side chains, right? And so, nope, no more slides. Okay, so what we look at then is how are different interactions possible between these side chains. So that allows us, uh, that brings back all of the interactions uh, that we can think about. So one, we can have um, we can have electrostatic interactions, right? And so that will be, for instance, uh, an interaction between a positively charged group, such as um, an arginine. So we'll just put a positive charge here. We won't draw the whole side, uh, side chain out, but we, that will have a positive charge at pH 7. And then something like glutamate, which has a negative charge, right? All right, so that can form an electrostatic interaction. And we call this a salt bridge, okay? All right, uh, other things that can happen is we can just have hydrogen bonding uh, between uh, two we can have hydrogen bonding between two amino acids uh, that are interacting with each other. So, and we can also, the protein can also, the side chain can also, for instance, hydrogen bond to uh, something in the peptide backbone, such as the NH or the carboxyl group, right? No, the amide of the peptide bond, right? As we get closer and closer packed to each other, uh, things are going to have, uh, are, things that are weaker forces usually are going to be able to have stronger interactions cumulatively because there will be so many of them. So remember van der Waals forces, okay, will play a role in stabilizing the protein. And then we can also have, as I discussed earlier, we can have a covalent interaction. And so the one we typically think about that are called disulfide bonds. Okay, which can occur between two cis residues, all right? So cis has an SH side chain and it can form a double, it can form a bond with another cysteine residue through the sulfur. And so that's called a disulfide bond, all right? But what largely drives, so what's really, uh, Remember in the last video where I talked about there can be, uh, the secondary structures can be amphiphilic, right? There can be a hydrophobic side and a hydrophilic side, okay? What really drives the, um, the folding of, and the interaction between the secondary structure is largely the hydrophobic effect, okay? So these are all, so what I've described over here all right, are largely enthalpic contributions. To protein stability and to its folding, right? But the large, what the driving force of the protein is largely an entropic driving force. All 
and that's the hydrophobic effect. Okay. Now remember the hydrophobic effect. The hydrophobic effect is essentially uh, nonpolar residues uh, trying to hide from the surrounding polar environment, that is the water. Right. So the hydrophobic effect causes uh, what you, causes this collapse where uh, the hydrophobic residues or the hydrophobic sides of the secondary structures all point towards each other on the inside, much like a micelle, right? And so they hide from the water outside. And so what you expect to see and what you largely see in many proteins is that the interior of the protein uh, are a lot of hydrophobic residues, things like uh, tryptophan or isoleucine or leucine or valine, right? Um, versus the outside, that the part that's exposed to water, are going to be polar or charged residues. And so, again, you can think of this kind of like a micelle, where you have a hydrophobic interior and then a hydrophilic exterior.